Today, I'm gonna make mushroom pizza. Cause there's some stuff in here that you ain't gonna find anywhere else. Most important ingredient is the mushrooms. You can use fresh mushrooms, but I am going to be using these Trader Joe's medley mushrooms. They're frozen, really convenient. And why I like them, not only do they have a nice variety of mushrooms, so there's champignons, there's oyster mushrooms, there's boletas, and there's a whole bunch. Uh, Slippery jack mushrooms. Yeah, there's a lot of different kinds of mushrooms. Olive oil, garlic, and parsley. So it's nice and seasoned. It's flavorful. I don't have to do anything. Well, I actually, I do have to do something. I am gonna cook it up in the pan. I'm gonna also have onions and I bought this prosciutto from Costco. So that will go along with it. That will be the topping for the pizza. But instead of a red sauce, I'm doing a bechamel. So naturally there's some milk, butter, flour. I'll add salt, white pepper, and a little bit of nutmeg. Also some Parmesan right here. I'm gonna shred this. When you're using Parmesan, you want something that kind of has a smell to it. Pungent, strong, okay? I will top the pizza with some mozzarella and I'll eat all of that with this arugula. I just been loving this, it's kind of peppery. It's a great topping and it's a nice way to lighten up your pizza, especially with a heavy flavor like garlic, mushrooms and bechamel, which is very flavorful. First thing you have to do, make the bechamel. First thing I'm gonna do is melt the butter. Uh, the reason you want to do the bechamel first before anything else is because you want it to cool down. You don't want to be super hot. Over here, I'll just show you. I've already got a red sauce going, which is cooled down enough now. I'm just going to put it over to the side. Right when I'm done with the bechamel, I'm going to put that whole pot right into here so that it cools down faster because I want to make these pizzas right away. When I'm doing bechamel for a pizza, I'm not as worried about the consistency. Typically you want it to be super smooth, super delicate, no kind of texture, which I do still try to get that same smoothness, but it's not as important. Uh, speed actually is what I'm going for. I'm just gonna go ahead and mix it. I'm gonna turn down the heat now. I just need the pan to be able to melt this. So you melt your butter. I've done a full video on bechamel, so just look at my playlist, look for bechamel from start to finish. This is gonna be the quick version. I'm just gonna melt the butter. And what I'm doing here is getting it hot enough so that when I add the flour, it really cooks the flour to the point where it's smelling like a buttered toast. Okay, that is good enough. I'm gonna turn up the heat a little bit, then just add the flour. I'll try to remember but my bechamel recipe, I'll add it to the description just so you guys can follow along or make this yourself. Or the quick directions for the ingredients and the amounts. Two cups of milk, four tablespoons of butter, and a fourth cup of flour. Salt and pepper to taste, I like to use white pepper. But if you do this, you get enough sauce for about two pizzas. I've never seen bechamel put onto a pizza. Let me know if you've ever been to a restaurant where that was the case. It's a little extra and of course it takes a little more work to do it. I find that it's totally worth it because it's just so elegant, especially with the mushroom, it goes along with it. Now, one of the best mushroom pizzas I ever had in my whole life was a pizza that had no sauce on it. It was just garlic, olive oil and mushrooms. Did I mention the best mushroom pizza? So not necessarily the best pizza, but the best mushroom pizza had no sauce on it. I just do this because I know Judy likes it and the girls like it. But the color is going from that golden yellow color to almost a tan, light brown, really light. This is right when you wanna start adding your milk. I'm gonna turn down the heat. I'm just going to pour it in slowly. Yep. Typically, I don't even like that sizzling, but right now, like I said, this is kind of a quick sauce. I'm gonna add the first half, continue to stir. At this point, I am just gonna go right to the whisk.
Mm. Salt. White pepper. I use the white pepper so it hides in the sauce a little bit. Not that I'm really that worried. Also, I like the sharpness of white pepper versus black pepper. Because I want to cook this pizza right away, I'm going to put it into this bowl full of ice and cold water. And periodically, I'm just going to stir it like this. I don't want it to be completely cooled down because it'll stiffen too much. It'll get too thick. I just want to cool it off enough so that it's not burning hot because I'm about to make this pizza real quick here. While those mushrooms are finishing, I'm gonna go ahead and prep the prosciutto and the onions. I'm gonna simply just dice this up into much smaller pieces and then I'll sprinkle it on right um, before I put it in the oven. And then with this, I'm gonna slice it up, uh, toss it in some olive oil and it's just gonna be good to go. I put that on the very top because these will cook in the oven. If I were to cook these beforehand, they would get too soft. I want them to keep some of its body. So I'll go ahead and prep these right now and then uh, prep the dough and then we'll be ready to bake these pizzas. This is a two day sourdough. It's been fermenting for 48 hours, obviously, two days. But yeah, that two days of it sitting in the refrigerator after I turned it into a dough ball lets it break down all of the, I don't know, the flour, the wheat or whatever. And it's just so much better for you. So if you ever get a chance to try sourdough anything, definitely try it and you'd be surprised there's some pizza places you're probably eating at that does sourdough pizza already they just might not call it sourdough because they're going through the fermentation process i don't know all the technicalities around it what makes it true sourdough versus just you know doing a ferment so i'm putting it in a bowl of flour this is arguably the hardest part of the whole process it's just shaping it because it is delicate. Now, if you do it right, the pizza dough will have some strength. I'm using a double loaf flour right now, so it should be fine. I'm gonna flip it over. Pepperoni mushroom is what Judy and I really like. When we go out, if we're gonna choose a flavor, it's usually pepperoni mushroom. But as I get older and I go to fancy pizza shops or just try other people's mushroom pizzas, Mushroom has definitely become one of my favorites to try at other pizza shops because it's amazing how much more flavorful other cooks, other bakers, I guess you could say, uh, make their mushrooms. And I, you know, I have a good friend, his name is Matt, a cook named Matt, and I'm always asking him, probably as much as I ask him about steaks, how do I get my mushrooms to taste better? What kind of method should I use? Should I roast it? Should I saute it? Um, he doesn't always give me a straight answer. I think it all depends on what I'm cooking. But yeah, uh, it, it's fun hearing how he would do it. Uh, I, I'd say if there is one thing I want to cook with him is a mushroom pizza. I want to see because he used to work at a place called Sears Pie. So that'd be that'd be pretty cool. But yeah, mushrooms underrated topping on its own of course a lot of people have it with other other uh toppings like pepperoni but by itself oh so good and if you do it right you don't even need a sauce all right so i'm just going to stretch it out this is a really heavy dough right now this is just about right and it's the right strength 
I'm gonna lay it on. It's not perfect yet, but I can stretch it out on the pan. See those bubbles? You want those bubbles. And then what you do is you stretch it out within the pan. I believe it's sticking a little bit to the bottom of the pan right now, which is okay. Now, if I was gonna put this into the other pizza oven, which I will, I wouldn't want it to stick. You'd wanna put something underneath, but since it's gonna slow bake to a certain degree on this pan, it's okay. I'm gonna put the bechamel on first. It's a little more thick than I would normally have it, but that's okay. I'll spread it around with the spoon. This is bechamel. I'm just gonna spread it around. Now this bechamel is pretty salty, so normally I put a little bit more and I would add salt to this, but I'm not going to. This bechamel basically tastes like Parmesan cheese. Is it too salty? You like it? It's really good? All right, good. So I'm gonna put some mushrooms on and as you saw, I cooled it down. All right, because the uh, bechamel is pretty salty, I'm not gonna put that much cheese on there. With the prosciutto, I'm not gonna put that much in there. I'm just sprinkling it here and there. You really don't even need the prosciutto, honestly. It's gonna add a little bit of protein. We do like that protein on our pizzas. We want the flavor of the mushrooms to come through. Last but not least, the onions. The onions, I just put straight on top. And don't worry, it's gonna be cooking long enough to where it won't taste raw, even though I am putting it on there raw. The heat from the oven, either oven, is gonna cook this and it's gonna get a sweetness to it. It won't have too much of an onion flavor, but it'll still keep a little bit of its body, just enough. This is ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and get it prepped right there. 500 degrees, it's been heating up for a while. I'm gonna throw it in there for 13 minutes. I like to put it kind of on the upper rack. Hopefully, it turns out good. All right, so the timer just went off. Let's just check it. Oh, baby, oh, that is good to go. This is the first one. Oh my gosh, that is perfect. Fold them when I do one of them cut. Wow, I like it, you know what? It's lighter than before. Because I'm using double O flour. What? Double O flour. Oh, I don't know. It's good for pizza. Mm -hmm. This is so good. Mommy, I don't think they would want me to pull the dance. All right, the very last pizza. It's gonna be another mushroom pizza. And I've got the ingredients. Just enough for the second mushroom pizza. Onions. Prosciutto, mozzarella cheese, mushrooms, bechamel. The cool thing about mushroom is it's so delicious that if you want, you don't have to have any protein. It's a great replacement for protein. If I went vegan for whatever reason, mushrooms would get me through it. In fact, when you eat a, a vegetarian or a vegan burger, a lot of it is mushrooms. That's how meaty it tastes without it actually being meaty. So that's that's good. And it's because it's so full of flavor. It's got umami. Now, if you don't use the Trader Joe's mushrooms, which is already cooked, it's already seasoned, it's got other flavors in it, just buy any mushrooms. You can go to the farmer's market, buy whatever you desire. I would highly suggest though, so. don't put raw onions on there. You wanna dry roast them on a pan or dry, I guess, pan fry them. Or I would even put them inside the oven and roast them there. A little salt and pepper, a little bit of olive oil. Even though it cooks in the oven, to get that really strong mushroom flavor, you're gonna really want to 
try to bring it out. Even this, this is already pre-cooked. It's okay, she can talk. It's already pre-cooked, obviously, the Trader Joe's one, but you really want to concentrate the flavors. I'm using a lot of this bechamel. This is a thinner crust, so I need to really spread it out. Dry roast it in a pan, roast it in the oven. You want to enhance that mushroom flavor because that's the key. It needs to cut through everything else that you're using. A lot of pizza houses that have mushroom as an option, don't put other ingredients. But if you make that mushroom flavor really come out, it'll stand out. Last thing I'd say about uh, mushroom pizza is have fun with it. Put it on a pesto pizza. Uh, of course, uh, mix it with pepperonis because that's a classic, it's really fun. But go to a farmer's market and find a mushroom guy. Try to find a place that has different options. Oftentimes, Japanese or Asian grocery stores have tons of mushrooms. This time I'm gonna put the cheese on first. I'm gonna try something different. I don't need that much cheese because of the bechamel. It's so thick on here. And there's a lot of Parmesan in the bechamel and I told you this one was a little salty. Normally I would add more salt on top of everything, but since the bechamel is salty. A lot of people don't like mushrooms because they never had it cooked in a way where they would enjoy it. Nothing against a person that cooked it that way. It's just, especially in America in the 90s, in the early 2000s, it was just that canned mushroom. I remember I had a bad experience with canned mushrooms. I didn't even like it. So it's not just you. But when you have something really good, anything with mushrooms, but when they are, when it's done well, like for example, a mushroom soup, a cream of mushroom soup, oh my gosh. And I believe they still do the same thing. They dry roast it. I'll tell you a little trick though. Yeah, um, I learned from Matt, porcini powder. So you, I think either roast it or dry or dehydrate it and then you make it into a powder. Then you put that. Oh, that sounds so good. I've actually had it at a restaurant. I don't know if it's a secret, so I'm not supposed to tell you where I had it because I don't, I don't want to give their secret away, but it's really good. I did just give the secret away, but I'm just saying. Now I'm gonna put that mushrooms. They're super cold now. They're, they're, they feel a little bit cooler than room temperature. I don't know how that happened. One of the reasons why this Trader Joe's mushrooms are so good is because they've already concentrated that flavor. And they're using some mushrooms I've never even heard about. So maybe there's extra flavor in those. The nice thing, the nice thing about frozen mushrooms, like any kind of frozen ingredients, similar to frozen fruit or frozen vegetables. They're freezing it at the peak of flavor. So they already do a lot of the work. Next time I'm gonna try to do a mushroom pizza, but using raw mushrooms, or well, raw as in mushrooms I get and I cook and prepare from the farmer's market. Oh, there's a lot of mushroom there. Last but not least, honey, how'd you like the onions? You liked it? I'm gonna put a little bit extra on this one. And um, if you notice on that last mushroom pizza, the onions still held its form, but the tips of it got a little blackened, a little charred. So that's perfect. That's exactly what you want. That's where the flavor is gonna come from. But there's a lot of sweetness in mushrooms. So you wanna make sure your oven is as hot as possible, okay? Some ovens go to 550, so. Oh, baby. Oh my gosh. That is what I'm talking about, baby. Mushroom pizza, done. I'm gonna have one bite here. Mmm. Not her.